<clears throat> one, two, three, mic check, mic check, okay. Uh, cue epic music, please. Redfall lost most of its players, Amazon announced a multiplayer game in the world of the Lord of the Rings, and Blizzard cancels the only reason for making Overwatch 2 in the first place. This and much more in This Week in Gaming. Good? Uh, okay, then roll the intro, please. The acquisition of Activision Blizzard by Microsoft is like a soap opera these days. Recently, the British government didn't greenlight the transaction, claiming that what Microsoft proposes as a way of not creating a monopoly is not enough. However, the European Union now gave Microsoft a thumbs up, even though they were one of the first to claim potential problems that the acquisition spawns. All Green also came from China's State Administration for Market Regulation. In total, this makes 37 various institutions that agreed for the acquisition. However, this whole thing is probably not done yet. That's right. It is an eternal island. Something that piqued my interest is the recent announcement of creating a new MMO in the world of Lord of the Rings. Amazon Games, so the creators of New World, in collaboration with the Embracer Group has started its work on bringing Tolkien's world to online life. Again. Apparently, the project is still in its prototyping stage, which means that there's no set release date on the horizon. The developers aim to create a great game first, and only then the priority is to mirror the books kind of. As always with long-living games, the creators use the magic term will support this for 10 years. I have a love-hate relationship with New World, so I'm interested but cautious at the same time about this whole thing. Only to fall. They said one drop of my blood could change everything. Redfall is losing players, and fast. If you look at Steam, 95% of the players already stopped playing the game, with the last 24-hour peak being lower than 300 people playing at the same time. You can expect serious drops in people playing with single-player games, but with something as co-op oriented, it means that things went sideways. I tried to Redfall myself, felt that it had nothing interesting to offer, and went back to playing Darkest Dungeon 2. It's sad to see years of work by a renowned studio just die that quickly. All we know so far. A quick update from Diablo 4. The game got a launch trailer with Billie Eilish singing in the background, and the developers claim that they're ready for launch and that their servers will hold. In the recent interview with Eurogamer, the devs praised all beta tests for allowing them to understand their own technical capabilities and what needs to be done to have a smooth launch. Apparently earlier than that, Blizzard worked with millions of automated bot accounts to test the load on Diablo 4, but there's only so much that can be analyzed like this, and the true results that help smooth things out came from beta tests. Well, fingers crossed for No Error 37 on June 2nd. Speaking of Blizzard, it was announced that BlizzCon is coming back this year in person. If you're a fan of all things Blizzard, then you'll probably be interested in visiting Anaheim, California on November 3rd and 4th. There's not a lot of details yet, but apparently June will bring more info regarding the program and the tickets. There is nothing more powerful than imagination. Nicolas Cage is coming to the world of gaming in person. If you're a fan of Dead by Daylight, then you're well aware that oftentimes new DLCs bring characters or licensed franchises into the game, like Stranger Things content or Bruce Campbell as Ash Williams. This time, however, it's Nicolas Cage himself that's being brought in as a character. More info is to be revealed on July 5th, but for the time being, people got excited with just the teaser. I wish they brought Pedro Pascal with Nick Cage, though. V Rising got a huge update called Secrets of Gloomrot. It's a free update that introduced a lot of changes into the game. Not only were some improvements introduced into the existing building system, but also you can now create multi-story castles. Vardaran, so the land itself, was touched up a bit, spellcasting was improved, there are some new regular enemies on the map, as well as 13 new bosses. And obviously, there is a new area on the map called Gloomrot. Even though there were some issues at launch and three hotfixes were already introduced after the update, it seems to be getting better now, although I still get connection issues every hour or so. Run! Ah! 
Remember the rumors from last week about PlayStation Showcase? Well, as often happens with Jeff Grubb's inside info, they turned out to be true. PlayStation Showcase is happening on May 24th at 1pm Pacific Time. The showcase is supposed to last over an hour and focus on PS5 and PSVR 2 games from both PlayStation Studios and third-party partners. I'm quite interested to see what PlayStation has in store. Finally, maybe some news about Spider-Man 2? It's disappointment. Coming back to Blizzard for a bit, people got angry because apparently Blizzard is removing the only reason for creating Overwatch 2 from its roadmap. Hero Mode was announced to be launching with Overwatch 2, but then it was delayed. People still expected the PvE mode to come because it sounded a bit exciting. Even though it was just a PvE combat while playing as a single hero, there was supposed to be a skill tree that you could progress through. Now it all went to the gutters as the devs announced that Hero Mode will not come to the game at all as the whole endeavor proved to be too difficult to create in its promised form. Some PvE elements will still come as a timed event, but not the Hero Missions as a separate mode. What are your thoughts? Were you waiting for a PvE mode in Overwatch 2? Trouble is cropping. Time to wake up. We didn't have to wait long for more than just a teaser for the next Mortal Kombat game. Thanks to the full trailer, we now know that the game is actually called Mortal Kombat 1 and it's a reboot of sorts. The game is to be released on September 19th, although if you get a premium or collector's edition, you'll get access 5 days earlier. Jean-Claude Van Damme is coming as a skin for Johnny Cage if you own the premium edition as well. If you pre-order the game, you get to take part in beta tests that will happen in August. Ah, the platforms too. Obviously, it's coming out on PS5, Xbox Series X and S, Nintendo Switch and PC. All bitter rivalry. Lords of the Fallen got another trailer with a specific release date as well. The game is coming out on October 13th this year. The trailer looks quite nice, with Fear of the Dark by Iron Maiden playing in it, so someone had some money to spare. This game too you can already pre-order as standard, deluxe or collector's edition, incoming for PC, PS5, Xbox Series X and S. Instead of using money, you'll transform the world around you by contributing and working with your clan. And to finish things off, a bit of a drama in the world of indie games. Roots of Pacha, so the game that some people described as prehistoric Stardew Valley, disappeared from Steam. The reason for that is the conflict between Soda Den, the devs, and Crytivo, the publisher. Crytivo says that they helped the devs for the past three years, and two days after the release, the devs rescinded the contract, and thus the publisher no longer shared in the profit from the game. The studio did not respond to that that, so it might be true after all. After that, the publisher requested Valve to take down the game from Steam. If you got the game, you can still play it, however, if you didn't, then even the Steam page for Roots of Pacha is gone now. We'll see how the situation develops, especially that the game actually got really good reviews. And now for the hot releases of next week. Fans of spending their time tending to crops will have a joyful day on May 23rd when Farming Simulator 23 releases. It's a mobile version that will be playable on Android, iOS and Nintendo Switch. And you know what Farming Simulator is all about, right? If you liked Mutant Year Zero Road to Eden, then the next game from the same developer might interest you. Miasma Chronicles is a tactical game with RPG elements in which you take control of a party traveling through the post-apocalyptic world that's been taken over by the mysterious force. While exploration happens in real time, combat is turn-based and it looks quite nice. And that's May 23rd for you as well. On the same day, Planet of Lana will have its release. It's a really beautiful 2D platformer. Everything was hand-painted and you can see it in the details. And come on, you get a cat-like companion while traversing locations. So, May 23rd and also day one on Game Pass. Hey, do you like trains? I like trains. Then on May 25th you can hop into Railway Empire 2, a sequel to the game from 2018 that gathered lots of good opinions. As is usual in railway games, you get to develop your own railroad company by building tracks and all the surrounding infrastructure, buying trains and preparing timetables for them. The game comes out on PC, PS4, PS5, Xbox One and Xbox Series X and S. And it's also day one in Game Pass. Railway Empire of the 19th century. My. 
And to finish things off, May 25th sees the release of The Lord of the Rings Gollum. As you can expect from the title, it's a game about Gollum. It's an action-adventure game made by Daedalic Entertainment and the main reason I remember about it is because it's uh, ugly as hell. And for some unknown reason, it has huge system requirements on PC. The game focuses on the story of Gollum after meeting Bilbo Baggins and losing the One Ring. So, if you want to give it a shot, then in four days you can play it if you own a PC, PS4, PS5, Xbox One or Series X and S. Switch players will have to wait a bit longer. Kill it if need be. That's it for today, take care and see you next time!